as the servers and uh, guys and the TFOs and they just trust the level of humanity. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about um, Hostile Leg Part 2 and um, with a focus on open surgical repair as the treatment of choice. Um, I don't think it is the treatment of choice all the time, but I definitely think it has a very important role in hostile neck. I just wanted to start by, by talking about hostile neck and the term that has become way more popular and repeated with endovascular and with understanding more the behavior of endovascular devices. So in the past, vascular surgeons were those with the more in the room. They wouldn't say hostile neck. We wouldn't describe it that way. And the relationship between the, the, uh, host, the neck and an open repair, completely different than the relationship between the neck and an endovascular repair. In open repair, it's mainly transactional, clamp side and a stitching zone. In endovascular repair, it's a lifelong relationship between a stent and the neck that can change. And these two differences makes a lot of um, uh, um, uh, kind of the perspective issue as we go uh, to compare both of us. What is hostile? Well, the dictionary say unfriendly or not liking something, opposed in feeling, action, or character, antagonistic. Can you imagine that you would be using your ceiling zone, the most important part of an endovascular repair, with those descriptions? One other important thing is the differentiation between the absolute um, definition of a neck and a ceiling zone. And I find this slide really a very nice descriptive one, um, which is basically showing that the difference between a, a neck as it is defined as two parallel walls and a ceiling zone which can extend to a little bit of less parallel walls. And you can see that in the middle, if you're going to have a stent graft apposition, to a wall that is not parallel. This is what is described most of the time as hostile neck. Now, the types of hostile neck, you've already seen that. You can see that the neck length is an issue. Angulation, the shape, which can be conical, or reverse conical, or barren. These are the ones that have description. Thrombus in the wall that makes the acquisition with the real wall slightly different, and calcification as something that, again, can compromise both the ceiling zone and the um, um, opposition to the wall. Um, the, it is without a doubt comparing EVAR with good necks to EVARs with hostile neck that the hostile necks do fail more and this is uh, just from four years from a huge database as you can see published I think 2019 or 20 um, showing how they diverge very early on and carry on diverging and we know what happens after four years as we go along with endovascular repair. So it's likely that this diversion would carry on. So now the question is, are all hostile necks for endo hostile for open? Or are we comparing a hostile neck as a definition for endo, but not necessarily something bad for an open repair? And I, with a, with, a, with a surgical perspective, I can tell you that the neck for me, if I'm gonna do an open repair, is completely different than endo. The neck for open repair is a clamp site, so I want a safe place to put a clamp, and then I have a clamp risk, which means, is it above one renal, above two renals, is it crushing the SMA, is it with a, a calcified bit eccentric that might bleed when I declamp? And then there is the stitching zone, which is the part below the clamp. How long is that? What's the quality of that? And will it hold the stitches or need more and more uh, stitching? So you can see that the, the, the difficulty and risk and type of repair is one, not really dependent on many of the characteristics of hostile neck for endo, but also it's very transactional. If you can put a safe clamp and do a good stitching and it doesn't bleed, I'm not saying that it's going to be perfect as a perfect neck but it's unlikely to have issues on the short and medium term. Now these are a few necks, and I'm going to look at it with an open surgical eye. Well, the first one is short. Put the clamp above one renal and stitch below, and that should be fine. Putting a clamp above one renal, renal is something that some would find not a familiar thing, they don't do every day, but if you do that, you will end up with a very good stitching zone. Angulation. Pull the aneurysm a little bit down. Once you put the clamp and the aneurysm is deflated, it becomes actually on your side to have an angulated neck and the stitching is quite easy. What about conicals? 
Well, the back wall might need slightly bigger stitches and might be annoying, but there's nothing wrong with a little bit conical as long as the absolute size is not bad. What about thrombus? Take big bites. And then the final one, which actually I find hostile in open and endo, but in open actually can, can be more hostile, is the porcelain one. It's the one that has danger with cramp and difficulty to pass stitches. And these are the ones that need to be predicted beforehand. Now, if you look at hostile neck and endo, I think the neck length move your clamp space and your stitching zone one step up. So there is some hostility in a very short neck, converting an infrarenal open repair to a juxta or a supra, and that takes the complexity and the risk to the next level. And if you go to the calcification, I think the risk goes to the next level, both from a clamp site injury and from a stitching and falling apart of the wall. But angulation, diameter, barrel, reverse conical, conical, a bit of thrombus, I don't see much hostility in open repair, but there is a lot of hostility in end repair. Now, are they hostile for open but not hostile for endo? Yes, there are, but we don't talk about them much because they are very straightforward and most of the time go endo if you can. Previous upper abdominal surgery and adhesions, surgeons don't like to go back on those ones, you can go right to peritoneal, porcelain aorta with all of its risks, inflammatory aneurysms, most or some of them, if you have a good endo repair that is likely to be uh, less controversial, and redo aortic surgery if you've already had multiple visits to the aorta, maybe an endovascular would be the better one. But these hostilities are not described as a hostile neck. They are hostile for open repair, but not necessarily the neck. The contemporary outcomes of open complex aortic annulus. Now, if some of those open repairs are going to be converted to a more complex one by moving the clamp above, you can see that the risks are going to go above. So if it's not an infrarenal, if you need to move the clamp to suprarenal, yes, the risks are higher, all of the risks are higher, and the open repair is not going to be an infrarenal open repair. But are they going all to move from an infrarenal to a complex? The answer is no. The majority are going to, apologies, that uh, the majority are going to be either a slightly difficult infrarenal or an easy juxtarenal. That's the reality of a hostile neck once. So you're not comparing a complex open to a, a, a complex endo. You're usually comparing an infrarenal that is slightly difficult to an endovascular that has bad features in the, in the ceiling zone with all of the endovascular options that we're going to talk about. You can do a compromise EVAR and put endo anchors. You can do a FEVAR. You can put a chimney. All of them with some pros and cons in the context of a hostile neck. Um, we know for sure that there are some good results and, and from, from some of the registries, if you really plan it well and you use your neck length to the maximum and you use endo anchors as an adjunct, you can achieve good results, very comparable to longer necks. But that tackles only one or maximum two types of the hostility of the neck, not all of them. So to kind of conclude, you cannot really rely on everything just because it fits. You have to see what's going to be the long term of this and the interaction uh, uh, with a very important part of the neck. If you're going to compare the open repair for style neck with, with fevers, which is again a big chunk of those cases, you can see that the early outcomes are, are comparable. You can also see that in open surgery in high volume centers, they have not seen a significant increase into the morbidity and mortality between uh, juxtarenals and um, uh, perarenal annulus repair, which is interesting, but I think it only applies on high volume centers. What about ruptures? We know from the improved trial that actually endo is probably better, and I, I like EVARs and rupture, I really like them and I think they work. But do I like them with hostile necks and bad necks? I don't. And actually, all of the data support that EVAR in a hostile neck in a rupture context is, is much inferior than EVAR with a good neck. While in open repair, doesn't make much difference uh, as long as the clamp site is going to be compared to the same. So there is diff definitely some issues around the decision making here. One of them is the experience of the, of the center. There is no, not enough long-term data for open hostile neck. So we don't know if they fall apart, they get through granulars, if they get more intact fistulas. We also don't, don't too many endo variants and fast growing. So by the time you understand one, you have 
endo anchors, then you have a new device, then you have a new IFU, and you're always catching up what's going to happen to the new, more advanced technology. And there's no head-to-head -head comparison that is easy for hostile neck between one single intervention and the other with matching anatomical and physiological uh, criteria. I think there is a lot to learn about hostile neck and whether we're going to call it a neck at all or not. And I think that hostility is different. The one with the thrombus is not like the one that is anatomically looking different. And I thought we were um, really doing very well in that. I don't think we're doing well enough and I think we're still in a very early part of the learning curve to understand the uh, ceiling uh, zone a bit more. So this is the pragmatic approach to conclude. I think MDTs are very important with all expertise, open and endo with a full range. Think good open option first if the patient is fit in a hostile neck. That is my view. IFU is there for a reason. Once you have a breach in IFU, rethink all of the thought process. Plan B and a bailout should exist and you can burn bridges with a compromised uh, endo option. What type of a hostile uh, uh, neck it is impacts the decision and I think there is a room here for AI and image analytics to help us in risk stratifying and making um, a slightly more uh, informed decision making. Treatment of choice is making the right choice from all available options and thank you.